Blessed be the name of the Lord. I greet everyone with the peace of the Lord Jesus. Our brethren who are watching us through Zoom in the church. Gospel according to John. John 12 Let's go. Verse 1 forward says the following. Jesus, seis dias antes da Páscoa, a Betânia, onde estava Lázaro, o que falecera, e a quem ressuscitara dentre os mortos. Fizeram-lhe, pois, ali uma ceia, e Marta servia. E Lázaro era um dos que estavam à mesa com ele. Então Maria, tomando uma ratel de um guento de nardo puro e muito preço, ungiu os pés de Jesus, enxugou-lhe os pés com seus cabelos e encheu-se a casa do cheiro do unguento. Então um dos seus discípulos, Judas Cariotes, filho de Simão, o que havia de traí-lo, disse... Por que se não vendeu este unguento por trezentos dinheiros e não se deu aos pobres? Ora, ele disse isto não pelo cuidado que tivesse dos pobres, mas porque era ladrão e tinha a bolsa. Em outras palavras, ele era o tesoureiro, né? Ele que cuidava ali das... E tirava o que ali se lançava. Disse, pois, Jesus, deixai-a. Para o dia da minha sepultura, guardou isto. Porque os pobres sempre os tendes convosco, mas a mim nem sempre me tendes. E muita gente dos judeus soube que ele estava ali e foram não só por causa de Jesus, mas também para ver a Lázaro a quem ressuscitara dentre os mortos. Amém? The brother can sit down. You already said. <laughs> well. I give orders and you obey because you are wise. My brother, want to forgive to the brother because of the fact that took place last week through Zoom. A person mistakenly, I think, left the microphone on and began to complain. What message is this? What is this? What is that? And kept talking. I want to apologize to the brethren because this is not a place for this. If you have a complaint to make, you have my phone, you can call me. Or you can call straight to the presbytery. But during the service, we are here to praise the Lord. A person begins to talk and complain about the message, about the preacher and this and that. It is something that we don't, this is not the place for it. So we would like to apologize to brethren from Zoom who are here tonight. And I also want to say that it's not going to happen anymore because we took uh, action. So if the person does not turn off, the person will be removed. So here is the clarification to the brethren as an apology to the brethren who are watching through Zoom. Amen. The presbytery is there. The messages are there. They are sent to the pres by the presbytery. We're not preaching whatever we want. We have a chronogram, a revelation to all the churches in Brazil and abroad and they are all connected to the same presbytery and so if someone is is not in agreement with it it is difficult so we have nothing to do either the person has to go back to Brazil and has to work on the presbytery so that 
they can opine in what the Lord is wants to do. Amen. So let's continue. We need to understand what is the project of salvation for the life of man. And we have a, a, a progress. All Christians have their spiritual life ahead of them. And they need to do exactly what the Lord wants them to do. So they need to make an effort for this. And Jesus was like that. Jesus was the example. As a man, as a son, a son of God, as the Messiah, the Savior of humanity, Jesus left for us an example for our entire life in every area of our lives. And here, once again, He showing to us it was the week of Passover, like here, today's Passover. He was getting ready for the fulfillment of the law. And Passover was a law, was a feast, was a moment of intimacy that the Jewish people had with the Lord. Because what is Passover? The children may even give us a class about the Passover, the true Passover. The Passover the biblical Passover is nothing like what we see in the world. The biblical Passover is the celebration of a deliverance that the Lord gave to a people, a Jewish people, a Hebrew people. So, Passover, in fact, the word in English makes more sense than in Portuguese because the word says that on that day, on the Judge, the last judgment the Lord cast up against the Jewish people, the ones who obeyed the instruction of the Lord and the revelation of the, of the Lord that did according to what the Lord had revealed and that put the blood of the Lamb on the posts of their door, the angel that came to take the life of all the firstborn that did not have this mark or sign of the blood on their doors, Every firstborn was destroyed. And on the following day, the people left. So this moment here of the Passover highlights a special moment in the life of the Hebrew people. A new beginning. And from there, they left Egypt of a life, we could say, a life of slavery without having a nationality without having a reason to leave in order to go to live in the Promised Land. So Passover is the celebration of all this. None of this that we see out there, it's all good, but it helps the, the businesses, the children, and all this, chocolate. But what is biblical is this that we are talking about. That's what we studied about uh, the last week. The importance of the Lamb, and how important it is to obey the Lord, to obey the revelation. This is all important. And Jesus here was going there to fulfill this commandment, this instruction of the celebration of Passover. But it is interesting that Jesus, he came here in Bethany, and he saw a situation that was I'm not going to preach about Passover because everyone here knows otherwise imagine if we what he spoke and studied this week we had Sunday school so Jesus comes here on this moment here in this city in Bethany and he finds a difficult situation a family that he liked very much. One brother and two sisters, the brother of two sisters, he had died. And the word, Bethany, who can tell me uh, who the, what the word Bethany means? House of suffering. House of misery. The word Bethany means this. So Jesus, 
he liked to go to Bethany very much because there there were people like us people that suffered people that are living a moment in their lives a moment of pure indecision pure misery, suffering so Jesus when he goes to Bethany he goes to fulfill the project of the Father and now if we go back a little bit backwards before Jesus on chapter 12 when Jesus was already on chapter 12 celebrating the miracle that took place on chapter 11 it shows the situation of what happened with that family Lazarus he, he becomes sick and Jesus was two days away one day away from Bethany and now the sisters of Lazarus they send a message to Jesus they say Lazarus is sick is ill so come here to help out because the situation is difficult so then Lazarus ends up in that situation they ask someone to go to Jesus and when this person travels one day to go where Jesus was when that person arrives there Jesus says the following do not worry because this infirmity is not going to lead to death and then he returns and when he returns Lazarus was already dead and the sister surely asked hey where Jesus is and then he answered look Jesus said that this infirmity is not going to lead to death but Lazarus was already dead so now Jesus stays two days and now he decides to go to meet with the family and when he now goes to speak with the disciples that were there worried because Jesus was already being looked for by the Pharisees he was he was being sought after to be judged and to fulfill everything that had already been established in eternity for his life it is good to make it clear that the death of Jesus was not a failure it was a fulfillment of what had already been established there in heaven man simply is is a supporting character he's a participant but what had already been established there with the father but so Jesus when he informs the disciples he says that's what's going to happen this week I'm going to depart then they become worried and then Jesus answers Jesus says let's go there and wake up Lazarus and the disciples said hey isn't he dead in my brethren for Jesus it doesn't matter waking up from a sleep or resurrect from a death is the same thing for Jesus it doesn't matter for Jesus the power of God cannot be measured doesn't matter for God to wake up a man from a sleep or removing him from a tomb like Jesus did. The sister of, the, of Lazarus didn't understand anything. And then Jesus, when he arrives in the house, no boy, it's not working again. I think it's something to do with the wire. And Jesus, when he arrives there, he meets with the sisters in a very difficult situation they were crying afflicted for the loss of the brother and if we look now a little bit the life of Martha and Mary we will understand something very important for our lives as servants of God and in a certain situation Jesus went to the house of Martha and Mary in another situation he went to the house of both of them because he liked that place very well he knew the family and now Martha she she liked to do uh, uh, home chores she was getting ready and preparing for sure, for sure food something to, to offer to Jesus and Mary sat at Jesus' feet and began to listen to Jesus and Martha going back and forth back and forth it bothered Martha to see Mary, Mary doing nothing so then Martha 
comes and tells Jesus, Jesus, that's all right, I'm working here. He asked Mary to help me because otherwise it's going to be difficult. I'm working here alone and she's there doing nothing. And Jesus turns to her and says, Martha, Martha, you are too anxious. Mary chose the, mat the better person. And what did Jesus mean with that? was that listening to the Word of God, to be listening and obeying, learning from God's teachings, is the better part of our lives. Not that he was telling her that the home shores were not important. They were important, but at the proper time. But at that moment, Mary had chosen the right to thing to do, and which was to stop everything that she was doing in order to hear what Jesus was saying. So here is this teaching for us. We need to be able to uh, divvy up our days. We need to do our chores, our obligations, but we also need to set a time aside for prayer. S set a uh, time aside to read in the Word, a time to dedicate our lives to the Lord. And that's what we need to have. And that's why he said, that's what Jesus told to Martha. She told the better person. So then, when Jesus comes here after four days, Lazarus was already dead, and then he arrives, and Martha was the first to meet with Jesus. And you know what Jesus tells Martha? He had a conversation with her, he spoke about resurrection, and that she should not be worried, and that death was going to be for the glory of the Father. And then he said something interesting, where Mary is? Where is Mary? Ask call Mary. Then Martha went back to call Mary. And when Mary came to meet with Jesus, she said, Master, if you were here, my brother would not have died. And she began to cry. And that touched in Jesus' heart. You know why? Because the life that is at God's feet, the life that has intimacy with Jesus, the life that is dedicating to the Lord Jesus, the life that is, is, is setting time aside for prayer, for sanctification, that life has intimacy with God. It's different. Of the one who just wants to know about the things of this life, he wants to do, he wants to buy this, he wants to do that. Kneel down for a minute. Oh, but their mind is somewhere else with the death, with the, with would work and no with Mary was different Mary has intimacy with with the Lord Mary had close closeness with Jesus and she understood who Jesus was not that Jesus friend that Jesus that came to their house and spent hours there and moments no she understood that Jesus was truly the Son of God he was the Savior of her life and when Jesus listens to what Mary asks and he cries and she cries. Jesus also cries. And then Jesus turns to Lazarus, uh, turns to Mary and says, where did you place Lazarus? And then he said, Lazarus, come out. And all the miracle that happens. And then Jesus now resurrects Lazarus. And now here in chapter 12, they, they made a celebration for the resurrection of Lazarus. And Jesus was there. Celebrating with them, Jesus invited. On the week of Passover, Jesus went went to Bethany and went to the house of Lazarus. And Lazarus now alive and the sisters happy and the, the friends and neighbors for sure celebrating. And in the midst of this celebration, Martha once again cooking. And you see Martha was there, Martha cooking like, like, all, like never before. Like some of the sisters here that like to cook, the ones that are always, uh, they made supper, and Martha was now serving. Martha in the same situation. And Mary, out of the blue, she comes up, he does something that was impressive. She had saved up a perfume, very expensive perfume, 300 denarii. Denary. It was uh, similar to one day, one denary 
denarii was the equivalent of what people, what one day's wage. So she had, she had a perfume that costed 300 denarii. So she accumulated uh, quite almost a year of work. If you take out Saturday, because it didn't work Saturday, people there Saturday, 365 minus 52 weeks, it was more or less like this, 300. So it would be an entire year of work. She goes there, buys this perfume so good, extremely expensive. I imagine the sister here, she would, they would never do this this expensive French perfume only a drop here and there <laughs> only the smell just to say that you you used it but she takes the, this perfume this this very concentrated pure hair rare and they go where Jesus was she breaks the the vessel was not was not out of glass was out of stone but and she pours it all on Jesus' feet. Can you imagine what a blessing? And Judas, he was, uh, immediately got upset. Oh my goodness, what a waste! What waste! There is always one to say something like that. What a waste! How can you do something like that? Why didn't you pick up this perfume? and sold and gave the money to the poor but in fact it was not his he was not worried about it he wanted the money for himself but why is that my brethren the life of the servant of god is a life that we need to have a walk in our lives and a walk with jesus has to be like this in intimacy why is that because the man that has intimacy with Jesus, the man that has intimacy with Jesus is always called to do the work of the Father. And Jesus called Mary. Martha, I can I'm listening to you, but I want to see Mary, I want to talk to Mary. And the servant that has intimacy is always being called by God. And God is always showing to them, He's always giving them meetings with men, that the people that need to be saved. He's always being called for an, an activity in the church, for a visit, a new position, something new. Why is that? Because he is at the disposal of the Father. He's always willing to hear the revelation. He fulfills the revelation and God says he answers as a servant that is it's like Mary. She's always ready to answer to what God asked. And this type of servant, the servant that sees the miracle, the servant that participates, that is always close to the Lord, that is always in a position, they are always seeing firsthand the miracles of God. They are always touching on God's heart and the prayer that is made by these people. God always answers. It is different than the ones who live in their short, uh, word about the shores of this, li this life. And Mary, she was different. She saw her brother being resurrected there. It was a miracle, a tremendous miracle. Was Lazarus not, did not have a headache or... Uh, he was dead for four days. It was proven that he was dead for four days. And that irritated the Pharisees a lot. Because this news spread for the villages for Bethany and other places where Jesus passed by. This was great success. And Mary was there. She saw it. And now Mary, when she sees this, the, her gratitude is different from the gratitude of other people. She poured herself out at God's feet. The gratitude of the servant is close to the Lord. It is like this. They come to glorify the Lord. Come to the service to glorify the name of the Lord. They come to glorify the Lord. They come because there is no other place they, will, they would want to be. 
because they want to hear the voice of the Lord. They want to receive the blessing from the Lord. They want to hear, you are my chosen servant. You are my beloved servant. That's what we want. And how this night, and here on Zoom, there are many people like this that are here with sincerity of heart, seeking the Lord with sincerity, seeking the Lord with a contrite heart, with joy. You know why? Because they know that Jesus is the Savior of our lives. If we read, read here in Mark, Jesus, when he spoke about this, in Mark, he writes the same story in a different way. And he said that when Jesus, Judas complained, you know what Jesus said? She did what she could do. She did what she could do. And if you see in Mark, Jesus tells, do not worry, because she did what she could do. And my brethren, it is truly, there are truly people that do everything that they can to the Lord. If we look to the history of the church, we'll see many servants who have done everything that they could do to the Lord and not what they wanted to do, what they could do. And many servants here from the primitive church, they died in the arenas. Many were crucified. Many were burned alive on the crosses. Many gave themselves away because they could do it. And the servant of God that truly wants, but many times they put limitations on themselves. There is a difference between doing what you want and doing what you, can, uh, what you are willing to do and what you are able to do. Many times, men limit what they, they are willing to do, but they don't want to do. Men put the limitation on themselves. Willing is not necessarily what you can. But tonight, the Lord is looking for the ones who are not the ones who want to do, but the ones who are able to do. Because the heart enters in between the, the willingness and the ability to do. Uh, we, I can even ask you tonight, have you done for God whatever you are able to do? Have you been able to do everything that you are able to do? What is within your reach? God does not want a sacrifice. God does not want the impossible. He has shown that. The the, the Lazarus' sisters, they could not do in any way possible, even if they wanted to resurrect Lazarus. But impossible, God does. God wants what we can do. And tonight, the Lord is seeking a servant that can do whatever they want with sincerity. With sincerity. So, in other words, the Lord tonight, He is seeking from us, seeking servants that want and are willing to serve the Lord. The power goes beyond your desire. Oh, maybe you you can, but you, you don't want to do it. That's all right. Nothing wrong with that. Martha could have done what Mary did, but she didn't want to do She decided to do other things. And there are other people like this. Isn't it true? There are other people that are sadly, not always, they want to do they want to do, don't want to do all that they are able to do. They want to do, but they don't want to do. They are able, but they don't want to do. But Martha and here and Mary, they sh Mary shows exactly the opposite of that. She took something that was a riches that she had. If you if you look at her heart, maybe you would have noticed. Maybe she didn't want to do this, but. She didn't look at what she wanted to do, but her action. That's why Jesus said, "Jesus, don't." That's why Jesus said, "Don't worry, because she's preparing me for my death." You know why? 
because the glorification of Mary at that moment was because her brother was dead. It was confirmed that four days dead, but at that moment there, he was alive. So Mary said, Jesus, I want to glorify you for the life of my brother. I want to glorify you for my life. I want to glorify for the life of my husband or for the life of my wife or the life of my children in your presence. And that's what Mary was doing. And that's what Mary there, she poured out at Jesus' feet because that's what she, she could do. And tonight, my brethren, the brethren who are here and the ones who are on Zoom, today Jesus is calling you to do whatever you are able to do. I know that many are willing to do, but many times uh, the events of this life, the obligations, the difficulties, and many times they prevent us from doing. But we're not going to look at it. Seek the Lord with sincerity. Pour yourself out. And Judas thought that it was a waste. And many people think that it is a waste for us to be at this time here in, in church. Many think that there is a waste for the youth to be in a service like this. The world sees this as a waste. But the Lord Jesus sees as this as a gratitude. As an honor to God. As a, a, a song of praise to the Lord. While many are out there saying many things, but we are here serving the Lord. And th there are people like this that the Lord is seeking. There are people like this. Those are people that the Lord is seeking today because we are living through difficult moments. We're living moments where the gospel is filled with people that don't do anything for the gospel anymore. They rather let go of the things. Oh, I don't want to go because if I tell that I'm Christian, people are even ashamed of saying they're Christian in schools, inside of families, in their work environment. They're afraid of saying they're Christians. You know why? Because they will be ashamed. They will be labeled as crazy or this or they are fanatic. Imagine if the children of Daniel if they wanted to have the, the mindset of the many of the Christians have today, they will never come to the... They will never... They, they, you can uh, increase the heat. I'm going to tell you like this. If we die, that's what... When they... Uh, your friends of Daniel, when they were sent to the furnace, they said, you can increase the heat. We may die, but Jesus, but God will be there with us. We have made a definition in the presence of the Lord. The Lord is seeking servants like this today, in this moment in which we are living. The Lord is looking for men like this. The Lord is looking for servants like this. Men, women, the ones who are married, women who are married, people that have made a definition, people that have, they are giving everything to the Lord. And Mary gave everything that she had. To the last drop and nothing was left she poured it out and then she wiped it with her hair and the smell that took the entire house took over the house how much joy you know you know when your praise your gratitude is seen by the church your definition of the lord is seen by the church this brings joy this brings joy to all of us this brings a dead edification for us. You know why? Because we live as a body. Church, body of Christ. And if you are blessed, we are also blessed. That's why my brethren tonight, the Lord, He wants us to come to the end of our race. Saying the Lord, saying, Lord, I have done everything that I could do, that I was able to do. If I go back, Lord, I'm sure that everything that I was able to do, everything that was within my reach, I have done on behalf of the of your kingdom, in, on behalf of my salvation. This is gratifying. This brings joy to the heart of God. And so tonight, may you have this understanding that Mary had. 
that many servants today still in the world that we, which we live difficult while many others are denied Jesus but also many are saying Lord I want and I, I can't do better I want to do better I will give my life into an author I want to give my life I want to give everything that I am I'm going to give you my work Lord everything is on your uh, author everything belongs to you nothing is mine May we tonight, Lord, my brethren, tonight, may we give to the Lord and may we see that the blessing of God is poured out upon all of us. Amen. May the Lord bless, bless us. Let us hear a song.
sadly many times we are not able we're, we are willing to do what we can but tonight the Lord is operating our hearts because tonight is a night of renewal it's a night where we're going to leave this place saying Lord I can do more I will do more for your kingdom for my life surely we can pray more surely we can be more faithful to the Lord we can glorify the Lord more we can set more time aside to pray to the Lord to dedicate more to the Lord we can but are you willing to do it? Are you willing? If you are willing, the Lord is going to give you the means. The Lord doesn't want the impossible. The Lord doesn't want... He doesn't want the impossible. He doesn't want sacrifice. What the Lord wants is a heart contrite and open. True worshipers. That's what the Lord is seeking. Let us stand up. We're going to have a word of glorification to the Lord. I want to praise your name, because truly, Lord, you do good for us. I have no words, Lord, to express what goes in our heart, how much we love you, because this you are everything that we have. We know that you are pretty wonders, Lord, in our midst. And bless your people in a way that cannot be expressed. And that's what we need, Lord, to be in our house, Lord, seeking your Holy Spirit. Because this does good for us. I want to praise you, Lord, because you are everything for us. And truly, we want to praise you, Lord. You are so wonderful, Lord. We just want to thank you, Lord. We want to work for you, O oh Lord. We want to serve you with all our heart. Because you have done everything for us. We praise you, therefore, in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Anyone else that is on Zoom may open up your microphone and praise the Lord. We praise your name, Lord. We thank you, Lord, Lord, for your grace, for your forgiveness, for your mercy. Because you have rescued us for the salvation, you delivered us of a world of darkness, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your name. Because you chose and paid a high price for us, and without deserving, Lord, but by your grace, by your love, that lasts forever. We praise your name because you have been victorious upon everything and triumphant. And you are worthy of receiving all the honor, all the praise, all the adoration. We praise you and praise your name for everything in the name of the Lord Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Amen. My brethren, the, the Lord was giving a revelation. We're going to pray for the church. And the brethren who are on Zoom, those who can and want to do more for the Lord. Not for the church. Not for the ministry, for the pastor, of Pastor Sabbath. No. We don't need that. And the Lord also doesn't need it. But the Lord is expecting that from us. The Lord is seeking the servant that is dedicated his life to him. And if so if you want tonight to make a commitment to the Lord, receive a blessing, you are going to kneel down. The brand here from church can kneel down. And the, the brand who are connected with us through Zoom, can, you can also kneel down. You're going to say, Lord, I need Lord. And Jesus said, she has done what she was able to. 
and surely we can do more on behalf of our own salvation. The ones who are going to be benefited are going to be us. We are going to receive the blessing of the love of God for the blessings and mercies and the forgiveness of God. Amen. Let us pray, pray with laying of hands. Lord to Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. My children. My servant, oh, God is speaking with you. Your heart, your heart contrite, are before me. At this moment, my oil is being poured out upon my people. And to you, my daughter, specifically, I speak with you. And that in your heart, you ask yourself throughout this message, am I doing everything that I can? And I tell you, our God rejoices with your, with the way you are in my presence. And to you, my son, your blessing is guaranteed. Put out your heart. I, I require of you a greater desire to read my word. And your blessing is already set aside. Church, glorify my name because this is the position of a, a faithful church, a, a people that is needy, but has a God that fights our battles, a God that fight our fights, and a God that gives victory to the ones who are at my feet. Glorify my name because your God is speaking with you tonight, and especially to my people who are watching through Zoom. Church, we have not been forgotten, but your your God is looking at your tears, your limitations, because you are not present. But the joy of your God is the same, because your heart is geared towards serving me. Glorify also your God, because the same blessing of the ones who are here present, who they are receiving, you will also receive in the same way. Because I'm a God omnipresent, glorify my name. Because your God is speaking with you, ordinary. Glory to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Holy is the name of the Lord. My brethren, the Lord gave a revelation for the service. The Lord has shown a woman that she is fighting a great battle at home, especially a spiritual battle regarding the situation of her family members, especially her husband who is spiritual cold, hasn't had the desire to serve the Lord, to seek the Lord. He's not giving worth, proper worth to his call. But she is being faithful to the Lord and being firm, has made a definition of the Lord and persistent in prayer on behalf of her family members. And tonight the Lord is giving her the assurance and sending an angel to her home with a torch, a flame, a fire. And this angel is going to warm up her entire house, and especially the husband of this sister. And from the service forward, the Lord is going to give a new direction, a new harmony. Spiritually speaking, the Lord is going to give to this family. Amen. 
Let's pray, bring this service to a close. Lord, we thank your holy name. We want tonight glorify you, Lord. All the honor, all the glory may be given to the Lord. Receive, Lord, our adoration. And give us a week of victories in your presence. Is a prayer that we say in the name of Jesus. Amen. And your name we say that the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations of the Holy Spirit, be poured upon all of us now and forevermore. Amen. The brand may be seated. We want now open up the assistance to the brethren here and also to the brethren from Zoom. The deacons and the ushers who are watching us from Zoom, if anyone needs a prayer from one of the pastors, we're here at your disposal. We can open up, uh, can bring up to the second floor and pray for, for whomever need a prayer from Zoom. So, I wish everyone the peace of the Lord. I wish everyone the peace of the Lord. This month, we're going to be praying for our youth. Amen. So the brethren may be fasting, early dawns, and noon service, fulfilling this determination from the Lord, the peace of the Lord Jesus.